Should you skip the iPhone 14? No. <laughs> Hold on a second, Craig. What about all these iPhone 15 leaks? Is Apple really bringing back Touch ID? I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Apple doesn't want to admit it, but there are a lot of new iPhone leaks we've got to talk about. In fact, we now sort of know Apple's iPhone master plan, not just for the 14, but the 15, the 16, and a little beyond as well. So let's break down all the latest leaks and rumors. Let's answer the burning questions. Should you buy the iPhone 14? Should you skip it? Should you wait for the 15? What are the biggest features coming next? Let me break it all down because the last thing you want to do is make a big, costly iPhone mistake. When it comes to iPhone leaks, we've basically heard it all at this point. From the folding iPhone, to stylus support, an extra screen on the back, some crazy new camera system, you name it, it's probably been rumored. But when it comes to the iPhone 14, things are looking now a bit more realistic for this year. And the design change we thought was gonna come might actually not come, and the design might not actually be all that drastic. Notches may no longer be gone. But that doesn't mean this stuff isn't coming, it's just coming later rather than sooner. Thanks to a bunch of recent leaks and rumors from a lot of credible analysts and sources, we've got a good idea at the iPhone 14, 15, and 16 lineup, and we sort of see where Apple is being a little bit more ambitious and experimental, and where they're really not. And as of right now, the iPhone 14 is going to be a big upgrade in some ways, but not so substantial in others. If you're really waiting for a huge redesign and tons of new features, this is probably not gonna be the year for you, but still though, I think there are a couple of big reasons that the iPhone 14 is going to be a successful phone and a couple of big reasons on why you, yes you, should consider buying it. To start things off though, let's break down what the iPhone 14 will and won't have. It probably will not have a big redesign. It won't have a no-notch model. It probably won't have a bigger screen and even a new processor depending on which model you pick up. But on the flip side, it will have some pretty substantial camera upgrades. It's gonna have a smaller Face ID system, potentially some secret satellite connectivity built in and a whole new model that is going to be very, very important. And this sort of brings me to lesson number one here. And that is if you're in the market for an iPhone that looks different, has a major redesign, and just is something different than what we've had for the last number of years, the iPhone 14 doesn't look like it's going to be that phone. Even John Prosser, who originally shared our very first look at the iPhone 14 before the iPhone 13 was even official, admits that now maybe those leaks could still very well be true, or maybe they're about a year or so early, and thanks to a lot of leaked CAD files and some info we've got from other sources, it looks more and more likely like the iPhone 14 is gonna retain a very similar design to the iPhone 13, which is pretty much the same as the iPhone 12, the iPhone 11, you sort of get the idea. But on the flip side though, keeping things a little positive here, one reason to consider buying the iPhone 14 is if you are a big fan of the camera. I know plenty of people, including many people here in this office, who are so uh, dedicated to the camera system on the iPhone and who love it so much, they will upgrade year after year solely for the improvements coming to the camera. And this year, specifically with the Pro models, should not be a disappointment by any means. That's because the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max will get a 48 megapixel main camera. This is a huge jump in optics uh, from 12 megapixels that we've had for years all the way up to 48 megapixels. And Apple is rumored to be using pixel binning technology to give you better, higher quality, more versatile photos and hopefully better video capabilities as well. We don't know what other hardware changes could come to the camera this year, if any, but I would expect, of course, a slew of software updates, probably better uh, support for ProRes video, portrait mode video should get better, or what is it called? cinematic video, that should get better. And I'm sure a number of other uh, different photo and video software things should be tweaked to be even better on the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro. And if you really live or even make a living by the iPhone's camera, which I know many people do, or you really care about taking the best, most high quality uh, videos and photos on the iPhone as possible, uh, then you are going to want to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro solely for the upgrades coming to the camera. Hopefully we see some upgrades to the regular 14 and 14 Max as well, but really the Pro is going to go all out with some major camera upgrades coming this fall. Now, the next thing with the iPhone 14 that we've got to discuss are the two most controversial pieces of tech. Two, four, what am I doing here? The two most controversial pieces around this phone, and that is Face ID and Touch ID. Could we see either uh, a Face ID under the display system here in the 14, or could we see Touch ID possibly make its return? Well, according to what we know right now, and even analysts are agreeing on this, it seems like under display Face ID is coming, it's in the works, but it's not gonna 
happen this year. It's probably going to be as early as the iPhone 16 in 2024. That'll be when the TrueDepth system that sort of makes up the Face ID system will move under the display. So you won't have no notch, you won't have no cutout, just one big beautiful display that you can enjoy on your iPhone 16. This year with the iPhone 14, of course, we are getting the double hole punch on the Pro models, the regular notch on the 14. The next year with the 15, we're hearing that Apple is gonna give all phones the double hole punch treatment, which of course uh, still is good for Face ID, but uh, isn't good uh, for not having any obstruction on the display. And then hopefully as early as the 16, probably just on the Pro models, we will finally get no notch, no hole punch, nothing at all. But that of course is not happening this year, probably not happening next year either. Now, Touch ID is a little more of a touchy subject, pun intended here, uh, and it's a little bit more controversial for a couple of big reasons. One is that we really don't know what Apple's plans are, if any, uh, for Touch ID on future iPhone models. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple has no plans in the next few years, or really the foreseeable future, to add under display Touch ID to their phones. And this was a huge rumor, if you remember, even as early as last year with the iPhone 13, that Apple was gonna bring both Face ID and Touch ID to their flagship iPhone. Obviously that didn't happen and it doesn't look like it's gonna happen anytime soon. Which sort of leads you to the follow-up question here is could Apple sort of pull an iPad move and build Touch ID into the power button? I guess, yes, they could do this. Apple has done it on multiple iPad models. This would make sense for the iPhone, but if they could do that, why not just bring uh, Touch ID under the display and make things even better? Some have speculated that maybe Touch ID is gonna be something just for the lower end iPhones, that maybe the iPhone SE will keep Touch ID around and Face ID is sort of the premier flagship system for the you know more expensive iPhones, the 14, the 15, the 16. And others think that maybe Touch ID is sort of on its way out. It's sort of on the iPad for now and eventually Face ID will replace the system entirely or Apple is working a third option here to really perfect the system and will deliver Touch ID under the display sometime in the next three or four years when it's perfect. We don't know what the future of Touch ID is. And I guess I'm curious, would you rather have Face ID, Touch ID, or both? What are your thoughts on Touch ID? Should Apple keep it around on the iPhone? Are they doing enough to sort of uh, advance their under display fingerprint uh, technology? Yes or no? Let me know your thoughts on Touch ID and would you like to see it on the iPhone 14 uh, down below in the comments we can discuss and uh, talk about the uh, controversial uh, future and even the history of Touch ID. Another reason to definitely buy the iPhone 14 or at least consider it is if you want a larger screen, cheaper version of the iPhone. Now, good news, bad news here is that good news, Apple is launching an iPhone 14 Max this fall, which is a 6.7 inch display iPhone. So it's basically the size of the Pro Max, but lacks the Pro features and the Pro price tag. So it doesn't have three cameras, probably won't have ProMotion, ProRes Video. All of those Pro features will remain just to the Pro Max, but because of that, it also shouldn't be nearly as expensive at least that's the hope. This is gonna be perfect for aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends, brothers, sisters, whoever wants a larger screen iPhone, but who doesn't need all those pro and features, this is gonna be the perfect solution. And I think a lot of people are going to love a big screen iPhone. I know many people in my life specifically who are going to love this thing and I definitely would recommend buying it. On the other hand though, because of the 14 Max, there will not be a 14 mini. So if you are a fan of the small screen powerhouse iPhones, I'm sorry to say that that's not going to be coming with the 14 and probably isn't coming in the foreseeable future. For one reason or another, Apple is not continuing the mini lineup. There will not be an iPhone 14 mini. So either buy a 13 mini and sort of hang on to that last thread of the mini iPhone forever, or just sort of skip it and wait for the 15 and sort of uh, enjoy what is coming next because there's not going to be an iPhone 14 mini. We've also got some new tidbits here on the folding iPhone. This might come around the 2025 timeframe, 2026. It's a little unclear, but as of right now, we know that Apple is working on their folding phone technology and they're in advanced stages of really testing different models. This is maybe the 17, the 18, around that time. Not sure exactly what iPhone number this is gonna be, but Apple is testing a folding phone. So good news, bad news here is that yes, it's in the works, but if you are a fan of the folding iPhone, you're very envious of the Z Flip or the Z Fold and you want something like that, it's not gonna happen on the Apple side for quite some time. So if you are okay with just sort of sticking with what we've got, the 14 should be a great option. And if you wanna wait for the folding iPhone, you're gonna be waiting at least a couple of years, at least three years from now at the very earliest. So that's what we know on the folding iPhone uh, as of right now. 
At the end of the day though, of course, I've got to give the disclaimer that all this, it's just rumors. We don't know what Apple's going to do. We don't know the final design. We don't know the features. Nothing is official until Tim Cook or uh, somebody walks on stage and shows us this amazing new iPhone with those sleek promos and the demos. I'm sure a really cool Apple event will be happening this fall and we'll finally see what the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro is going to look like. But as of right now, we just don't know. But it is safe to assume a couple of things. If you want the latest and greatest iPhone and you want the very best, get the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. Especially if you have an older iPhone, you've got a 10, you've got a 10S, you've got an 8, a 6S, a 7, anything older than around that area, you're definitely going to see the upgrades of the 14 and 14 Pro. And I don't think that you should wait for the 15 or the 16 or what could be coming. And then of course, if you're happy with the iPhone you've got, you've got a slightly you know older phone, you've got a modern iPhone though, it's a 12, it's a 13, it's 11 Pro, something like that. If you don't need to upgrade, wait, because of course it's like a double-edged sword. The latest and greatest is always coming around the corner, which is great and bad at the same time. As always though, guys, I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think about the iPhone 14, the iPhone 15, the iPhone 16? What do you think about Apple's iPhone lineup as it stands right now? Do you think Apple is doing enough with the iPhone 14 to make it a worthy upgrade? Do you think they're saving more of the good stuff for the 15 or the 16? Or do you think all this is just worthless, people are complaining, and the 14 is gonna be an amazing phone? Let me know if you're gonna buy the iPhone 14 or 14 Pro down below, which model are you gonna get? What are you most looking forward to? And what would be the one dream feature you would love to see in the 14 Pro? Is it under display face ID? Is it under screen touch ID? Let me know your dream feature down below. We can get excited and discuss together. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Apple Circle. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.